I think this uh, gut brain axis was realized first by the film industry rather than us because <laughs> this was the uh, title tag line for the movie motion se emotion tak so they realized that uh, it is very much related to the mind and uh, this is what i thought that probably we are later to learn and that's why we are uh, just in time now so when we are talking about gut brain axis uh, this is what i'm going to discuss microbial endocrinology and what is psychobiotics what is gut sensing how gut acts as an endocrine organ then what is the role of this in health and disease and gastrointestinal hormones their target how stress works on this and what is the importance therapeutic implications and mind health as an adjuvant therapy because my area of interest lies in mind health and how mind is linked with uh, gut is what is the second thing so when we are talking about microbial endocrinology i looked into endocrine books we didn't have any definition so i looked into books on gut health and then i found this definition that it's a study of ability of microorganisms to produce and recognize neurochemicals that originate both from the host and the microbiota which reside in the host so it is the ability of these microbes to influence health now health in both psychologic aspects and physical aspects and brain and behavior can be modulated by these uh, organisms and it depends on what food you have ingested so i remember my grandparents telling me that you we are what you eat so you eat the right thing you become that way and that is how the microbes change you so neurochemicals produced by the microbiota in the gut have two pathways so they act either through the portal circulation or they work on the enteric nervous system so they would affect either the nerves or the hormones in the blood so portal system is also a carrier of these hormones so there is a alteration of behavior and cognition with food preferences and appetite which are in turn affect the gut microbiota so microbial endocrinology affects the behavior and vice versa it's a bidirectional uh, activity so that is why you see that within our old is when they are constipated they are very disturbed even if they are having loose motions all the time they are very panicky so gut has a lot of role with behavior and why is that so you can see this chain of events that the food is the responsible factor so food derived chemicals will cause xyz type of microbiota in the gut which will be taken into the circulation which will act on the brain then similarly the enteric nervous system will be connected to the brain through the vagus and this is how the brain gets affected with what you eat and that is how your behavior is decided now which behavior is important the food eating behavior those food choices why i want to eat pizzas why i want to eat only maggi is because my microbes tell me to do so so that this is how your behavior changes and what happens in disease now any disease is a stress so in stress what happens this whole pathway is over stimulated and then in stress you see that appetite either goes down or it goes up or it can be unregulated and food choices go for a toss in illness why is this so because all these pathway come into picture where the nerves are getting affected especially the plank splanchnic nerves and this is how the gut microbiota changes in disease so when i am stressed my cortisol is high and my microbes are different than when i am healthy so actually there is a new definition of health that the number of healthy microbiota in my gut decides how healthy i am so i need to have microbiota in plenty but i need to have more healthy than the unhealthy ones so this is what is the concept of health <clears throat> so importance lies in emotions and the microbes and emotions and microbes both affect the endocrine system very drastically and the behavior and that is how disease is caused so why it is important in diabetes because diabetes is most commonly affected and causative disorders and it's true for all non communicable diseases so this is the whole pathway that microbiology affects neurobiology which affects disease pathogenesis and homeostasis and causes allostasis so disease so this is how normal person gets disease so whenever you are ill your tummy is upset because all these microbes are changed so how does the gut sensing works now a gut is a big endocrine organ i'm sure arundhati is going to tell us more and minal is also going to tell us more but there are two systems one is the entero endocrine cells i am sure you will have learned it in anatomy that there are nearly 12 types releasing around 20 hormones in the gut and enteric nervous system 
It's actually called a second brain because it has equal number of neurons as much as there are in the brain. But uh, we really do not understand the enteric nervous system to that extent as we would otherwise see. And how does it impact behavior? All these behaviors, the satiety behavior, the propulsive activity, the motions, the digestive enzymes, the nutrient transport, local blood flow, acid secretion, everything depends on this. So when these two are modulated, you get a differences in all this. So that is why you see that people don't have excessive satiety, especially in obesity. They keep on eating because the gut microbiota of obese are different from lean. And similarly, you see that acidity is a tendency of most of our pre-diabetic patients with insulin resistance, and this is all what is changing in them. So the, I don't want to go through this slide, but I want to tell you that so many hormones are involved whenever there is stress. So it is not one hormone. There is cortisol, there is ghrelin, there is nisphatin, GLP-1, PYY, cholecystokinin, urocotin, and we as endocrine and diabetologists hardly know any of these. Now we have started working on the GLP-1 axis. Now, importance to understand is the importance of food. I'm not a nutritionist, but all food have hormones in it. So you can see that each and every food item, suppose banana has serotonin, which is a precursor for happiness chemicals. Then you have tomato, which has dopamine, which gives you soothing effect. So all these are linked with what we eat. So there is a lot of nutrogenomics and nutritive choices when we are talking about hormones being produced in our body. So choices should need to be right for right hormone production in the gut. So where does gut-brain axis actually involve? So it involves in diseases like GRD, peptic ulcer, inflammatory bowel disease, IBS, and why this happens is because there is an increase in the intestinal permeability, visceral sensitivity, and alteration in the gut motility. So we see in our diabetic patients also that they have GI dysfunction, some form, dysphagia, they have acidity, they have constipation, they have loose motions, and we don't know what the cause is. And we find that just you treat them with a SSRI or something which would suppress the nervous system or the gut chemicals, and they would be fine. Even probiotics works wonder. So intestinal barrier dysfunction is an important aspect in diabetes, and this is responsible for causing disease. And this dysregulation is the cause for disease dysfunction. Now, irritable bowel syndrome is associated with all these dysfunctions. So basic, uh, I think the slide is going slowly. I just want to rush through these slides so that we have a good discussion thereafter. So whenever we are talking about the gut-brain axis being hampered by any stressors, now stress need not be psychologic. It can be metabolic. It can be immunologic, or it can be just a psychologic stress. So metabolic stress is what we are now dealing with. We are dealing with uh, sugars, dyslipidemia, hypertension, and so many stressors. And neurotransmitters, immune functions, and cytokines, and motility keeps on changing. And as these change, the gut environment for the microbiota changes. So there, if I go into the depth of it, you will find that there are healthy microbiota, which are XYZ type of family and there are unhealthy microbiota, and all this finally decides whether the person will reflect, uh, remain healthy. Now, how does it affect the uh, glucose metabolism is our primary concern. So you see that glucose is detected by receptors on these enteroendocrine cells, and they produce GLP-2. Now, GLP-2 does not directly act on the sugars. It acts through the nervous system. How it will act through the enteric nervous system? It will stimulate the enteric nervous system to produce SGLT-1 and SGLT1 receptors are in turn stimulated, and this is how there is increase in the glucose transport across the intestine. So this is how the function in glucose is important as far well as the gut-brain axis is considered. So one more important point is gut inflammation. All these years I thought that the big tummy that obese ladies have is just due to fat, but I've just re read and realized that it's inflammation of the adipose tissue which is uh, at fault in obesity, and decreasing that inflammation itself is known to help the neurochemical production. So therapeutic implications are plenty, and I'm sure we are aware of this, antispasmodics, anticholinergic, tricyclic antidepressants, and of course there are new pre and probiotic which are known to improve the gut health. So this is known to improve the intestinal barrier, 
And now comes the role of adjunctive therapy. So here is my interest area where mind-body interventions come to play when we are talking about gut, he gut health and disease occurrence. So you can see that uh, mind and gut has a huge endocrine link. This is a very complex system. And when you are talking about gut health, we are talking about mind health also. So the moment we are improving our mind health, that is the time when we should be improving the disease. So it acts like an adjuvant therapy because brain is an important part of diabetes, organ of mind, and it affects the hypothalamo-pituitary axis. So I think we have been doing, Arundhati has been a part of this. Most of you all have been a part of all our conferences that we have been doing on mind health awareness and how you improve these technologies. So we have been doing this since past three years as an annual event, and uh, this has helped our understanding of mind health. We have been doing patient workshops on improvement of mind health, and it has helped them to take care of their disease as well as improvement in their understanding of disease causation. And latest in the last month, there are three important things which have happened for us. Is one is we are undergoing our fellowship program in mind-body medicine, which is due on 19th August. Secondly, Springer Nature has accepted a publication of ours, a podcast on mind-body medicine in diabetes. I think acceptance of Springer Nature for mind-body medicine use in diabetes, I think, is a milestone for us. And uh, that implies that globally people are getting aware of this. And third important is that I've been selected as the only member from India for psychosocial aspect of diabetes. That is the ESG group. And I hope to work with all of you in this field so that we can take this ahead. And I'm sure that there is a lot of future for this uh, whole scope in neurobehavioral endocrinology. So I think this is a brief overview. And probably we have two eminent ladies here who will now take us through their clinical experiences on how you handled gut brain disorders. So thank you so much for the people.